Anybody can have an emergency at any time. Car accidents, strokes, cardiac arrest, seizures, and other conditions cause tremendous suffering. They are also some of the most common causes of sudden and unexpected death. Every 28 seconds, someone in the United States has a neurological emergency, such as a stroke, traumatic brain injury, seizure that won't stop, spinal cord injury, or bacterial meningitis. Every two minutes, a patient in the U.S. dies from one of these conditions. Saving the lives of more people with emergency conditions in the future depends on making progress in emergency medical research. Patients with emergency conditions need emergency research. Often, the first few minutes or hours of an emergency can be the most important. New treatments started early in the ambulance or in the emergency department will hold tremendous promise. Clinical research is how new and existing treatments are tested to find out if they work and if they are safe. But research in the emergency setting is challenging. The environment can be chaotic and patients are often unconscious and unable to say whether or not they want to participate in research. The National Institutes of Health recognizes the profound impact of emergencies on their victims and how challenging research in the emergency setting can be. To address this need for better treatments, the National Institutes of Health and other agencies have recently created new clinical trial networks to focus on emergency research. The NIH is involving hospitals across the country and organizing them to tackle these difficult problems that affect millions of Americans. In emergency medical care, when patients arrive in the ER unconscious, we presume they want us to do our best to try to save their lives. We treat them even though they cannot give permission for us to do so. But sometimes we don't know for sure what is best. Some standard treatments have never truly been tested, and some new treatments get used just because they might be good. Doctors always try to do whatever is thought to be best for patients, but we need research to know what that is. When asked, most people support emergency research to get these answers, even if the research involves unconscious patients unable to give permission to participate. To protect patients involved in emergency research where they cannot say what they want, the federal government has created special regulations that researchers must follow. Patients are always asked whether or not they want to participate in research if it is possible to do so. But there are rare times when research is allowed even if patients cannot give their consent. The federal government's rules that allow what is called exception from informed consent for emergency research are quite restrictive. This kind of research can only be done in emergencies that are life-threatening, where we don't know if existing therapies work at all or when we know they don't work well enough. Research studies can only be done using exception when there is possible benefit to the patient from participating. Also, patients, or the families of the patients, who are enrolled in the trial and treated while unconscious, must be told about their enrollment in the study as early as possible and they only continue in the study if they choose to do so. Respect for patients is built upon these studies being open and transparent to the community through public disclosure and community consultation. These studies are announced publicly before the research study ever begins. Doctors involved in the study demonstrate respect for the patients that will be treated in the study by meeting with community groups. In these meetings, doctors learn about public attitudes and values and have a chance to explain the study. The study is also presented to the public through the local news media, as press releases and in interviews. Researchers also consult with survivors of the health condition they are studying and patient groups at increased risk for the condition being studied. After the study is over, the researchers bring the results back to the community to tell them what they have found. The researchers who perform research in emergency settings are carefully reviewed locally by institutional review boards, also called IRBs. IRBs are committees of doctors, researchers, ethicists, lawyers, 
and members of the general public that work to protect the safety of patients participating in research. On the federal level, there is also oversight by the National Institutes of Health, the Food and Drug Administration, and the Office of Human Research Protections.